Welcome to eBible Fellowship's Evening Bible Studies with your host and Bible teacher, Chris McCann. Please visit our website at ebiblefellowship.org. And now with his study in the book of Luke, here's Chris McCann. Good evening and welcome to eBible Fellowship's Bible Study in the book of Luke. Tonight is study number 9 in Luke chapter 1. And we'll begin reading in verse 9. According to the custom of the priest's office, his lot was to burn incense when he went into the temple of the Lord. And the whole multitude of the people were praying without at the time of incense. And there appeared unto him an angel of the Lord standing on the right side of the altar of incense. And when Zacharias saw him, he was troubled. And fear fell upon him. But the angel said unto him, Fear not, Zacharias, for thy prayer is heard, and thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son, and thou shalt call his name John. And I'll stop reading there. Now, um, as far as this statement by the angel of the Lord, and the angel of the Lord is... Um, God himself, the Lord Jesus Christ himself, and we'll probably uh, get into that a little later. But the statement by the angel of the Lord, thy prayer is heard, and thy wife Elizabeth shall bear a son, and thou shalt call his name John, is actually um, spiritually pointing to something much deeper than than just a couple an elderly couple praying for a son uh, to carry on their family name. Uh, This, uh, as we discussed last time, it has to do with God's promise to his people, the oath he has sworn concerning his salvation program and the the sending of the Savior, the Messiah, uh, the Lord Jesus, uh, who will come and fulfill the promises and enter into the world and and go to the cross to demonstrate the atonement performed at the foundation of the world so uh we we understand that and and that's why Zacharias's name means Yah has remembered and Elizabeth's name means my god of the oath the lord has remembered his oath his promise to his people and and so the the couple, the elderly couple, Zacharias and Elizabeth, represent the elect of God, the, the people of God looking, desiringly, longingly to the hills from whence cometh our help. Our help cometh from God, waiting on God to fulfill his word. And and that is the prayer that is heard and ultimately it points to not John, but Christ, who will, uh, just a few months after Elizabeth conceives, in her sixth month, the same angel of the Lord Gabriel, uh, as he's called here, will visit Mary, and Mary will be with child uh, by the Holy Ghost. And, and that holy child, that holy thing, um, the Lord Jesus Christ, will uh, enter into the world and 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 that's ultimately what is in view with the prayer of Zacharias and Elizabeth being heard it's the deep down prayer in their soul for for God to fulfill his promises and his word however historically uh, that doesn't mean that they didn't pray for a child. Now, they're old, they're well stricken in years. And I don't think it's necessary for us to believe that that uh, even in their old age, they were praying for a son. I don't think that's necessarily the case. It could be. Maybe God placed that that desire upon their heart, and they never gave up on praying to God about it. That's possible, but it's also possible they prayed when they were younger, when they were they were first married, and they prayed and 
and and in their 20s and their 30s and their 40s, maybe even into their 50s. And yet it never happened. It never came to pass. And and so, you know, um, if we have prayed a prayer at one point in our life, maybe for quite some time, and then we stop praying that prayer, that doesn't mean that God um, cannot uh, answer at a later date and make the statement that he makes here, thy prayer is heard. So that's also very possible that they prayed when they were younger people and of childbearing age and and uh, and now God is answering that prayer in addition to answering the prayer of the soul, the prayer of the collective saints um, for the Messiah. Well, anyway, we uh, saw that, uh, I didn't read the verse, verse 7, Elizabeth was barren, and they both were now well stricken in years. And in our last study, we saw how the word barren was used of Sarah in Galatians 4 and also in Isaiah 54, verse 1. And in this study, we uh, want to follow that word to the book of 1 Samuel, in 1 Samuel chapter 1, where we find another couple, and the man is named Elkanah, Elkanah, and he has two wives, just as Abraham had two wives, and uh, and one of his wives, Hannah, had no children. So we read in 1 Samuel 1, chapter 1, um, the first couple of verses, Now there was a certain man of Ramoth Amzophan of Mount Ephraim, and his name was Elkanah, the son of Jeraham, the son of Elihu, the son of Tohu, the son of Zuth, an Ephrathite, and he had two wives. The name of the one was Hannah, and the name of the other, Peninnah. And Peninnah had children, but Hannah had no children. Again, a consistent theme, even the two wives. Remember, Jacob had two wives, Leah and Rachel. Leah had children. Rachel was barren for a time. And Rachel was very troubled about that, that her sister was having child after child, son after son, and she had none. Hannah has a similar problem because the other wife, Peninnah, had children, uh, more than one child, but Hannah had no children. And, and in verse 3, this man went up out of his city yearly to worship and to sacrifice unto Jehovah of hosts and Shiloh, and and so forth. So uh, in verse 4, when the time was that Elkanah offered, he gave to Peninnah his wife and to all her sons and her daughters portions. But unto Hannah he gave a worthy portion, for he loved Hannah, but Jehovah had shut up her womb. And keep in mind that spiritual picture once more. The many more will come of the desolate uh, or of the barren woman than of the married wife, even though Leah um, has more sons and Penina has more children. Um, God paints the picture that the one that will be born of Rachel, Rachel the loved, will be uh, received the blessing. And and we've talked about this before. Ultimately, four sons are credited to Rachel and eight to Leah when you count the children of the concubine. And that's one third, two third. So the children of Rachel, like the children of Sarah, the, the, the children of promise. And the other, Leah being hated, would be similar to the children of Agar, the children of that covenant of works. Well, here in 1 Samuel 1, um, in verse 10, uh, we read, and she was in bitterness of soul. And the word bitterness is a word that comes from Mara, which was a very 
common name in in the time when Christ was born. His mother Mary had that name. Mary is the Greek form of Mara, which here is translated as bitterness. And she was in bitterness of soul. And and let me just say this about Mary's name. And that's the, the reason why that there were so many women named Mary. The, the bitterness of waiting, the sorrow of not having God's promise fulfilled concerning the Messiah, it, it led to many uh, naming their daughters Mary. Uh, well, returning here to 1 Samuel 1.10, and she was in bitterness of soul and prayed unto Jehovah and wept sore, and she vowed a vow, and said, O Jehovah of hosts, if thou wilt indeed look on the affliction of thine handmaid, and remember me, and not forget thine handmaid, but will give unto thine handmaid a man-child, then I will give him unto Jehovah all the days of his life, and there shall no razor come upon his head. And it came to pass, as she continued praying before Jehovah, that Eli marked her mouth, Now Hannah, she spake in her heart, only her lips moved, but her voice was not heard. Therefore, Eli thought she had been drunken. And uh, of course, um, he was quite wrong about that. And and Hannah uh, explains to him because Eli says to her, how long wilt thou be drunken? Put away thy wine from thee. And she says in verse 15, no, my Lord, I am a woman of a sorrowful spirit. I have drunk neither wine nor strong drink, but have poured out my soul before Jehovah. Count not thine handmaid for a daughter of Belial, for out of the abundance of my complaint and grief have I spoken hitherto. Then Eli answered and said, Go in peace, and the God of Israel grant thee thy petition that thou hast asked of him. And she said, Let thine handmaid find grace in thy sight. So the woman went her way and did eat, and her countenance was no more sad. And they rose up in the morning early and worshiped before Jehovah in return and came to their house to Ramah. And Elkanah knew Hannah, his wife, and Jehovah remembered her. Jehovah remembered her. The Hebrew word remembered is a car. It is the word that is a part of the name Zechariah. Zechariah, Zachar, Yah has remembered. And here, Jehovah remembered her, the barren woman, the woman without child, once again. She is remembered, and, and she conceived and bore the son named Samuel. Well, um, in the next chapter, in chapter 2, 1 Samuel chapter 2, We read in verse 1, And Hannah prayed and said, My heart rejoiceth in Jehovah. Mine horn is exalted in Jehovah. My mouth is enlarged over mine enemies because I rejoice in thy salvation. This is Hannah's prayer is is similar to uh, Mary's prayer that we find in Luke chapter 1 after she has been told she is with child of the Holy Spirit. And it it is the wonderful prayer that God has remembered. He has remembered his people. He has fulfilled his oath. Well, it goes on to say in verse 2 of 1 Peter chapter 2, there is none holy as Jehovah, for there is none beside thee. Neither is there any rock like our God. Talk no more exceeding proudly. Let not arrogancy come out of your mouth, for Jehovah is a God of knowledge, and by him actions are weighed. The bows of the mighty men are broken, and they that stumbled are girded with strength. They that were full have hired out themselves for bread, and they that were hungry ceased. So that the barren, and there is the word we have been following, the barren hath born seven, and she that hath many children is wax feeble. That would, again, refer to Peninnah historically, to 
Leah spiritually. It, it would refer to these women who bore many children, but they wax feeble because that covenant, the covenant that Agar uh, gave birth to Ishmael, that covenant cannot provide salvation. But the barren woman hath born seven. Now, that's interesting. That's interesting that God says the barren woman, and here we would assume it's referring to Hannah, that she has born seven. Why seven? She only gave birth to one, one son, Samuel. And how can it be true that she has born seven? Well, um, if we go a little further along, maybe um, the answer is that she has more children, and she does. The Bible tells us um, that Hannah had more children after Samuel, just like the Bible tells us that Mary had more children after the Lord Jesus Christ. And actually, it may even be the the same number of children. It's certainly the same number of sons. Um, we read in 1 Samuel 2, in verses 20 and 21, And Eli blessed Elkanah and his wife, and said, Jehovah, give thee seed of this woman for the loan which is lent to Jehovah. And they went unto their home. And Jehovah visited Hannah so that she conceived and bare three sons and two daughters. And the child Samuel grew before Jehovah. Now, it, it appears that the three sons and two daughters would be in addition to Samuel. Uh, and yet, even if we include Samuel, and, and that would make four sons and two daughters in total, that's only six. That's only six children. But verse 5 said the baron has born seven. And, and so um, now that appears to be a contradiction. What does God mean? Well, um, Remember when we were discussing Elizabeth's name. Elizabeth, my God of the oath. And when we went to the Old Testament, the Old Testament was Elisheba. And, um, and, and that is what means my God of the oath. And when we looked up Elisheba, the Strong's Concordance pointed us to the number 7651, which was for the number seven. But oath or to swear was number 7650 in the concordance. And it, it happens that here in verse five of First Samuel 2, the, the word here is Strong's number 7651. It is the word that's part of her name, uh, my God of the oath. Uh, remember the the consonants are what make up the 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 word, and and the number seven has the identical consonants to the the word for oath or swear, and it's just the vowel points that would make it slightly different in the concordance, and that's why they have different numbers. But but here we can understand it that. The baron hath borne the oath. The oath. You see, this is um, something I think we're learning a little bit more about. Is this this very close relationship between the word seven and oath. That they are very closely linked. Now, I don't know all the the reasons why that is. But I think we can understand when we see the number seven going forward that we've previously had the understanding that it identifies with perfection, and it does. There's there's some places where that idea of perfection or purification clearly shines through and 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 is what is in view, such as in Psalm 12, verses 6 and 7. But we also have to add that 
the number seven points to the oath. When we find the number seven, and and um, in various time paths or whatever, when we break down a number and we see the number seven, we have, um, you know, usually, uh, I have anyway, just said, well, this is the number of perfection. But now I believe we have to say this is the number of perfection and of the oath. And if it relates to the time of the end of the world, well, we could immediately see why God's oath would be involved with that because the end of the world is the fulfillment or that that last day will uh, be the fulfillment of God's promises uh, for his people with the resurrection. And, and it's also after destroying this world that there's a new world created and the spiritual land of Canaan of which we are the inheritors for an everlasting possession. And and that has everything to do with God's promise and oath, the thing he has sworn. So that is something that I think we can safely say we have learned. And, and Christ is the essence of the oath. He is the essence of what God has sworn. He Everything, all the promises of God in him are yea. And, and he fulfills all. And, and so um, Hannah giving birth to Samuel would have been a type of Christ, uh, spiritually a figure of the Messiah, as Mary will give birth to the Messiah. And in Christ is the oath fulfilled. My God the, of the oath, Yah has remembered. So um, interestingly, we see here in, in this account, back in 1 Samuel 1, 19, that when Hannah conceived, Jehovah remembered her. And now uh, the barren hath borne the oath, seven, which is, is likened to seven sons uh, or seven children. Uh, and yet there's a spiritual picture where it is Christ. It is Christ, the fulfillment of the seven or of the oath. And um, just one last thing before we uh, finish out this study is Hannah's name. Hannah's name um, is Strong's number 2584. And it comes from Strong's 2603, Hannon. Hanan, and Hanan is the word um, translated favor, graciously, mercy. It, it's a word that identifies with God's salvation for his people. And uh, wonderfully, wonderfully, in Luke 1, when we go back to our passage, we read at the end of um, verse 13, for thy prayer is heard, and thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son, and thou shalt call his name John. John comes from the Hebrew Johanan, and, and Johanan is the compound word, Jo for Jehovah, Hanan, Jehovah favor, Jehovah's grace, Jehovah's mercy is what John means. He is, he is the child that is pointing to, to God's uh, wonderful salvation that uh, there can be a people that are in Christ, counted for the seed, uh, and, and God has remembered them and fulfilled his oath. Hannah, uh, her name identifies with John's name. And Yah remembered her, identifying with Zacharias, and the barren woman Hannah bore uh, seven, or the oath, which identifies with Elizabeth. It, it's uh, just, uh, you know, very amazing, all the connections to the names that God has given us here in Luke chapter 1. 
You've been listening to eBible Fellowship's Evening Bible Studies with your host and Bible teacher, Chris McCann. For more studies and information, visit ebiblefellowship.org. Until next time, may the Lord's perfect will be done.